Welcome to the Dome from Home Club from the Apple Planetarium. My name's Laura McGann at Lord's University. When people come to the Planetarium, the Big and Little Dipper are favorite sites. We know these stars are far away, but just how far away are they? Well, within the Big Dipper, the closest star to us is Mizar at 83 light years away. The next close, the most distant star is Duby at 123 light years away. So even though these two stars appear very similar, they're actually 40 light years apart. That's about 235 trillion miles. Here's the constellation of Orion the Hunter. See that bright star in his, arm, in his shoulder? That star is known as Betelgeuse. It's over 500 light years away. Further still is the Andromeda Galaxy at about two and a half million light years. So, have you ever wondered how we know how far away these things are? It's not like anybody can actually go there and none of our rulers are long enough. The answer to measuring distances in space comes down to light and how we use the light that we get from the stars. The moon is our closest neighbor. We know precisely how far away it is because Apollo astronauts placed a mirror on the moon. Standing on Earth, we can shine a laser onto that mirror on the moon and measure the time it takes for us to see the reflection. Since we know the speed of light, the time it takes for light to travel from Earth to the moon and back tells us how far away the moon is. Here's our star, the sun. We can use the moon in two different ways to measure the distance from Earth to the sun. Remember, the moon is constantly orbiting Earth. If we magnify the moon, it's clear that what we see of the moon, or its phase, depends upon where the moon is relative to the sun and to Earth. When we see a quarter moon from Earth, that means that the sun, moon, and Earth have formed a right triangle. Measuring our corner of the triangle lets us figure out how far away the sun is. I'm not going to ask you to do that trigonometry, just realize this isn't that different from your high school math homework. Another way that we can use the moon is to during a total solar eclipse. These rare events are quite spectacular, beautiful, and a great help in figuring out the distance to the sun. Now, during a total solar eclipse, the Earth is passing through the moon's shadow, like this. We can also illustrate a total solar eclipse like this, though remember, this diagram is certainly not to scale. I think you can see that as if we know the distance from Earth to the moon, we can use that and a little more math to calculate the distance to the sun. So what about stars that are much further than our sun? We can measure the distance to stars using a technique that you use every day with your own eyes. Try this, hold out your thumb and then look at your thumb through one eye, then the other. You'll notice that your thumb appears to move relative to the things that are beyond it. Your thumb isn't really moving, it's that your perspective is moving as you look through it from one eye versus the other. This is called parallax, and the same thing works with stars out in space. Parallax works much the same way out in space. But instead of using our thumb, we're going to select a relatively nearby star and look at it through telescopes here on Earth, noticing what stars lie beyond our chosen star. To get the perspective of another eye, we're going to need to be patient. Earth is constantly orbiting around the sun. So if we make the same observation six months later, when the Earth is at the other side of its orbit, then we can look at our chosen star and we'll see different background stars. 
Using this technique of parallax, we can measure the distance to these stars. Parallax is so useful that it's being used by the Gaia spacecraft, which is making a precise 3D map of a billion objects in space. What do we do with stars that are even further away when parallax doesn't work? Let's think about light for a moment. We know that a nearby light appears brighter than a more distant light. Wouldn't it be great if we knew exactly how bright that distant light was? Stars don't come with labels, but there's a very special kind of star that can help us out. This is a Cepheid variable. Notice it's getting bigger And now it's getting smaller. These stars cycle on a regular basis, getting bigger and brighter, then smaller and dimmer. We've placed a Cepheid variable star in this galaxy. Can you find it? There's one star here that gets big and bright, then small and dim. Henrietta Leavitt was a specialist in Cepheid variable stars. She found a number of these variable stars in a cluster together, all of them the same distance from Earth. She observed that slowly cycling stars were brighter. The faster stars were dimmer. Leavitt's work led to a simple method for timing the cycling of one of these stars than calculating its actual brightness. Knowing how bright the star actually was compared to how bright it appeared in our sky lets us calculate the distance to that star. Today, astronomers look for Cepheid variable stars in other galaxies and use their light to calculate the distance to that star and therefore that galaxy. When our telescopes can't pick out individual stars, we look for this, a supernova. These explosions will outshine an entire galaxy. We can compare the apparent brightness to the actual brightness and calculate their distance. This is the Crab Nebula, left over from one such supernova. Now, supernovas aren't common, but when they happen, they're very useful. Calculating distances in space uses these techniques plus others, including redshift, but we'll get into those details another time. Thank you so much for watching. We look forward to seeing you under the stars in the Apold Planetarium again.